In this week's guided practice, we are going to do number seven uh, from the end of chapter four. Uh, this is number seven in both books. Uh, it's in the practice programs for the ninth edition Savage Text uh, and regular programming projects in the eighth edition of the Savage Text. And this problem reads like this. The gravitational attractive force between two bodies with masses m1 and m2 separated by a distance d is given by the formula force equals the universal gravitational constant g times m1 times m2 all over the square of the distance uh, between the uh, two bodies. And the universal gravitational constant is... Uh, 6.673 times 10 to the negative 8 uh, cubic centimeters per gram second squared. Uh, write a function that takes arguments for the masses of the two bodies and the sub or distance between them and that returns the gravitational force. Since you will use the preceding formula, the gravitational force will be in dynes. One dyne equals a gram times a centimeter over a second squared. You should use a globally defined constant, a universal gravitational constant. Embed your function definition in a complete program that computes the gravitational force between two objects given suitable inputs. Your program should allow the user to repeat this calculation as often as the user wishes. Okay, so I'm going to start a new project. Call this 4 7 gravitational force. Create a new folder. Call it the same thing. I'm going to declare some uh, variables here. Uh, we'll have the double for mass 1 and mass 2. And then uh, distance. And then we will prompt our user. I'll say enter the mass of the first object. And I, in parentheses, I've, I'm giving the user the unit of measurement, g is in grams, since we're using 6.67. 
universal constant do you, uh, is using grams, seconds, and centimeters. So those are the, the three units we'll, we will be using. Read that value in. Prompt the user for the next one. Uh, then we need to know the distance between the two objects. <clears throat> and then read that value in. Next, I'm going to deliver the output, and I'm actually going to call the function that I'm about to write within that output statement. So I'll say um, function call output. The force of a track between object one and object two. And I'm going to put an inline in here because I don't think uh, I don't think it'll be too long for one line in, uh, of output at a distance of and here I'm just wrapping this to the next line. Uh, if you don't put a semicolon at the end of the line uh, of output and then just start with that new uh, insertion operator on the next line, uh, you can uh, continue like that. And I'll display the distance and is spaces around it. Now I'm going to call the function And uh, pass to it the values, mass 1, mass 2, and uh, distance. Now you notice there at the bottom, pop-up window is showing uh, the function already. Well, this is because I've written this program before, uh, so it uh, recognized it from a previous compile. Uh, but I haven't written this function yet. This is what it will be like. And finally, the unit of measurement is dynes. Okay, so now for this function. And this is what the main topic in this chapter is all about, functions library functions as well as user-defined functions, so functions that you write yourself. So we're going to write this function and uh, what you should have learned in this chapter, uh, picked up from the uh, PowerPoint notes hopefully and in your chapter reading, is that when you uh, create a function you have to declare it. Now this is something that is uh, only true in C++ uh, more modern languages are able to uh, find your function without you having to declare it before you use it. So I'm going to create a function called gravitational force. It's going to receive three parameters. These are called the parameters, uh, the values that you pass, the data that you pass into the function. And in the function declaration here, uh, you put a semicolon at the end, and you have to tell it what the data type is. And then also, if there's a return type, either void or uh, some uh, other data type. So this particular function is going to return a double value, and it's receiving three. So uh, I'm going to make a comment about that. 
this function receives uh, the mass in grams of two bodies and the distance between them and returns the gravitational force between them. So we've declared our function here, and you must do that in C++. It has to be declared before it is used or called or invoked, another word for it. Uh, and then somewhere that function is going to be defined. So here we're going to define our function. And the signature line or the very first line of your function definition is going to uh, be exactly like the uh, definition, exactly like the declaration at the top of the page minus the semicolon. So double gravitational force. It's going to receive a double. And we don't even have to use the same names for the variables uh, that we uh, did elsewhere. I'm going to call it m1, m2, and then distance just to demonstrate that we don't the, have to use the exact same name. Uh, a lot of times you might have a function that you call several different times. Uh, several different places without a, throughout a project, and you may be passing different variables to it. It doesn't matter what you pass to it. Uh, on the other side, uh, whatever it's named, that's the name that is used for this scope within the, uh, the definition of the function. And that, again, doesn't have to match what you called it up here. You actually don't even uh, need these. <clears throat> Okay, so this function is just going to do a single thing. It's going to return a value. And if your function re has a return type, then it's expecting a return statement in there. Uh, if this were void, uh, then we wouldn't need a return statement. But just like our main function ha has a return statement, returning zero as the int, this function, our gravitational force function that we are defining, user-defined function, is going to need to return a double. So uh, that double is going to be our universal gravitational constant. Okay. So now back to the function. Uh, I can use that universal gravitational constant now. Return g times uh, m1 times m2. And divide that by. And here I'm going to use a library function, uh, the power function. I'm going to do... Uh, power, and notice it recognizes the power function already, and it's going to be distance here, uh, and then I'm raising it to the power of 2. Okay, just because the compiler recognizes that function doesn't mean that uh, it... Uh, has pulled in that library into the project. Notice if I try to compile now, you should get an error and it will say power was not declared. So this power function uh, belongs to the math library and uh, that math library we need to include in our project if we want to actually use the functions in it. You can see this talked about on page uh, 182 in the 8th edition and page 186 in the 9th edition. We need to include the CMath library in order to use this library function power. Compile now. Enter the mass of the first object. I'm going to say 25 grams. Uh, mass of the second object. How about 500 grams? And then the distance between the two in centimeters. Let's say uh, 45 centimeters. And the force of attraction between object 1 and object 2 at a distance of 45 is 4.19 times 10 
to the negative seventh dines. Uh, first thing I notice is I need a space there after uh, my word of. And I didn't mention what the data type is. So down here, space after the word of, distance of, and then here I'll say centimeters. Okay. And the only other thing that the project asks us to do here in the textbook is it uh, wants the user to be able to perform this calculation as many times as they want. So we're going to do uh, something similar to what we did uh, in the Archimedes project, I believe it was, uh, where we create a loop, a do-while loop, and ask the user if they want to calculate again. Okay, so I'm going to go back up here, uh, outside of my variable declarations, create a do. And if I'm going to ask the user, uh, I'm going to create that uh, character ANS as well. Do this. While answer is equal to capital Y or answer is equal to lowercase y. And I need to prompt my user for that. And I'm going to start with an inline here. I'll say calculate force between two new bodies, question mark. Type Y for yes or anything else to quit. Read that value in. And good form, I'm going to indent that whole block there so we see that it's part of the do while, exists inside that do while loop. Okay. Run this again. I'm uh, missing the equal, second equal sign. Very common mistake in programming uh, in C and C -sharp and Java to accidentally only type a single equal sign when you are actually trying to do a comparison with quality. I made that mistake. Okay, enter the mass of the first object. Let's do a thousand grams, which would be a kilogram and maybe two thousand grams uh, centimeters. Let's do 2500 this time. And we have our force of attraction 2.1 times 10 to the negative 8 dynes. And then it asks us, do you want to calculate again? Let's type Y near the mass of the first object, and then we can do this again. Let's try 4,000 grams, and maybe 8,000 grams, and maybe 1 million centimeters. Any letter should quit. Okay, that concludes our gravitational force guided practice. Um, these are our user-defined functions that we invoke or call from our uh, main function. And we define them, and we have to declare them. And we've also added the math library and used a a library function power function this time. So good luck and happy programming. Don't forget to know yourself.